think our biggest issues will be in the areas of human factors. You look at the research in GNSS Ops and they're all worried about integrity of the signal and interference, and yeah, sure, that's a problem. But if you look at variability in the system, it's going to come from the human. We're talking about reducing risk and we need to have a reliable satellite infrastructure, that's for sure. The percentage of risk which that contributes is very small compared to the way humans can stuff up the operation of these systems. If a pilot is aware that they are vulnerable to these issues, that they will disengage from the old manual task of doing things, not because they're a poor pilot, but because they're human, and that's what we do, we try to be cognitively efficient. That's one thing. If they're aware it's going to happen, they can start to build defences, and a good pilot will look at ways of actively defending themselves against the risk. But if we just base all of our countermeasures in the future on training, we're in trouble. We need to take it back to design. We need to get good human factors thinking into the design of these systems. If the system is easy to use, half of our problems go away. We're going beyond the point where we're just strapping in technological tools to the cockpit. All the systems, even in general aviation, our aircraft are becoming incredibly highly integrated. Even pre-flight planning, where we can now pre-flight on an iPad, walk into the aeroplane and download that flight plan into our avionics suite. Think about the interface, think about the junctions where there's potential for data to be communicated wrongly, not through the technical side of the system, but through the human side of the system. We need to make sure that at each point we're doing that in the best way for the human. Just be aware that there's a lot of similarity in the way the systems work, and that's great. You've got one process, you've thought it through, you can apply it to those different boxes. But where they're different, that's when you can get caught out. And particularly if you're having to deal with that difference in a time compressed part of the trip during approach in difficult weather or being asked to make some sort of navigational change under pressure. Of course there's an obligation and a requirement when you're entering data into GPS, GNSS boxes that you cross check it, get some other reference to make sure it's okay. And it's important to know how important it is to cross check and to make sure that you hold up the ship, hold everything and make sure it's done so that you're confident in the data you've put into that system, you're confident that you can go ahead now and carry out the task. One of the problems with the technology can be the fact that the functionality is so huge. Sometimes not everything is critical to what you're doing for the flight, and that functionality can be good, but it also means that the menus can become incredibly complex and, and layered, and it's not unusual to get lost in those menu systems. Knowing your system is vital, so that if you suddenly have to make a change to an element of the data that you've loaded in or go and check some information, you know quickly how to get to that particular function without it having to occupy too much of your workload. One of the ways you can reduce your dependence on the GPS, GNSS, is to be an active participant in the navigation process. So rather than allow all the decisions to be made by the equipment and not interrogate those decisions at all, you can make sure that you are appropriately briefed. Given your weather brief and your concept of your idea of where the track is, nothing happens that you're not expecting. You're aware of where the aircraft should be heading when you see the GPS confirming your expectation. The other thing you can do is be aware of what some of the limitations are around its performance and around the track that you're going to be taking. So if you're going to start letting a GPS or GNSS take you direct to another waypoint, it's really important that you know about your original track, you know where the new track is and you are fully briefed on what some of the minimum safe altitudes, what some of the hazards are. That takes pre-briefing, that takes good threat and error management. So you're being taken somewhere by the box, but you are aware of the bigger picture and what the implications of changing those earlier decisions might be. It does come down to maintaining good situational awareness. And if you allow your sole source of information to be a GPS or GNSS box, then you've become highly dependent on that. And a good situational awareness is being able to manage when things not only go right, but also go wrong. And to do that, you need a broader, bigger picture so that you can stay ahead of the aircraft, stay ahead of the box if you like, and so that when it's making decisions around what the aircraft's doing, you're already prepared for that and it meets your expectations. We're getting an increasing number of incidents around uh, mismanagement or over-reliance on GPS, resulting in people in aircraft being in dangerous situations, and quite often they don't lead to any severe consequences. However, the potential is very high. If you're over-relying on a particular box, it's taking you somewhere where you don't even realise you're there, the potential is very high that you're going to end up, if not having an accident, potentially coming quite close to one. Because we're decommissioning a lot of those old navigation aids, 
there is going to be that move to being more reliant on them, we better start using them more effectively and being more vigilant about the way that we put information into them and the way we interpret information coming out of them.